Have you made yourself a honey syrup, made a few cocktails, maybe some classics like a bee's knees, and then you're left wondering what cocktails you can make next using your honey syrup? Well, this is the series for you. Today is part two of the three-part series. The first one covered the classics or the, uh, the usual suspects being the bee's knees, the gold rush, and a few others. Five cocktails, five honey cocktails in each video in the series. Today is part two, and I'm covering some cocktails from Milk and Honey, and Attaboy. So Milk and Honey is a famous bar. Uh, there's a few of them, but the, the first one started in New York, which has since been closed down. Uh, I believe it closed in 2020 maybe, but it started around 1999, maybe uh, New Year's Eve, I think from memory, don't quote me on that, but it really pioneered the modern cocktail scene. And when that place closed down, Attaboy opened up in its place. Again, Attaboy has a few different locations, uh, but New York City, I believe, was the original, and it took over the Milk and Honey space. So I thought uh, I'd keep these five Milk and Honey and Attaboy cocktails in one video together. Let's get on with the drinks. Um, for the honey syrup, I'm doing, I believe this is the, the specs that they use uh, from the Milk and Honey family of bars, and, and they usually use a three to one ratio. So three parts honey to one part water. I, I simply sterilize my bottle, add boiling water, one part to three parts of honey, mix it in until it's combined, uh, until it's dissolved, and then you have a slightly thinner version of honey, still very flavorful. Uh, it's gonna keep for a month or two at minimum, but just make small batches. Don't make huge batches, so you have to keep it in your fridge for a year. Uh, I have heard of people keeping it for that long, but I recommend keeping it while it's fresh. Let's get into the cocktails. The first one we're gonna make is a creation by Sam Ross, the Chet Baker. Let's start with the Chet Baker, which was created by Sam Ross back in uh, 2005 in New York at Milk and Honey. Now the original recipe from uh, Sam Ross's app does call for building in the glass and only rotating five or six times, uh, which I've noticed quite a few of the stir down cocktails say the same thing. I'm gonna stir it a little bit longer, add a little bit more dilution and chill it down a little bit more than recommended. <laughs> uh, they obviously like their drinks strong. I'm not sure if that's how they make all their stirred drinks. Uh, but Chet Baker calls for an aged rum, two ounces of aged rum, a bar spoon of sweet vermouth, a bar spoon of honey syrup, and two dashes of aromatic bitters. And it's strained over a rock. And garnished with an orange twist. They have the Chet Baker, aged rum, sweet vermouth, a little bit of honey syrup. It's probably the least uh, honey influenced cocktail on the list today, but it sounds very, very tasty nonetheless. Mm. Uh, Obviously there's only a bar spoon of sweet vermouth and honey syrup. So therefore the, the rum is gonna be the standout. So you wanna make sure you use a good rum and your favorite rum. So I think Appleton 12 works tremendously well in this. And you get the aromatics from the, uh, the bitters coming through, uh, a little bit of cinnamon and other spice coming. The honey is very, very subtle. It's only a bar spoon. So potentially you could increase it to a, a few bar spoons if you like it sweeter. It's not too sweet, but the honey is more pronounced. So that's completely up to you if you want to try that. The East New York Flip. This was created by Jose Gill back in 2005 at Milk and Honey. So it's a uh, riff on a New York Flip, which is a bourbon flip, a flip being uh, spirit, sweetener, and egg yolk, or can be a whole egg. In this case, it's an egg yolk. So this one's a bourbon base. So Wild Turkey 101, 1 1.5 ounces, 45 mil, three quarters of an ounce of heavy cream, three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, and egg yolk. We have egg in the drink, so we want to dry shake first before we wet shake. Just a short shake to emulsify the egg. 
add ice and shake for a further 10 to 12 seconds with ice. I said that, didn't I? <laughs> if you are yet to try a flip, you definitely should. Straight into a chilled coop. Now, some of you might be asking the difference between adding egg yolk and egg white or, or whole egg. Egg white typically adds texture, egg yolk adds richness, and the whole egg adds both. Grated nutmeg to garnish. They have an East New York flip. Cheers. So good. A relatively low ABV cocktail given the fact that you've only got an ounce and a half. If you want to, you could bump it up a little bit. You could probably even try this with a cast strength using the one and a half ounce. And I think that would work really well, add a little bit more, more kick to it. Really nice and rich. Um, surprisingly, even though we've got three quarter ounce of honey, it's not overpowering. It's just, it works beautifully with the cream and the egg yolk. Really rich, subtle honey. Honey works nicely with bourbon. Goes hand in hand. The Beehive by Brandon Bramhall at Attaboy in 2015. It's like a fernet honey daiquiri with an aged rum. Delicious. So I've chosen to use uh, Brick's aged rum, an Australian rum that is very flavorful. Uh, one that I quite enjoy. So two ounces, 60 mil, and then follow it up with fernet brunca. Fernet brunca being a um, bit of liqueur. It's gonna give off menthol, like minty notes, but really, really powerful and uh, we're actually we're using half an ounce 15 mil so it should stand up pretty strongly in this drink then we have lime juice freshly squeezed of course three quarters of an ounce 22.5 mil and honey syrup three quarter ounce 22.5 mil plenty of ice in the tin and give it a shake Typically any Fernet drink with lemon or lime juice, it doesn't look that great. <laughs> There's one called an industry sour. Can't remember what the ingredients are. I know it's got Fernet in it. Looks kind of similar to this. And the recipe doesn't call for a garnish. So there you have the beehive. As I said, a Fernet honey aged rum daiquiri. Or the beehive. Cheers. Damn. I love the fact that as soon as you see a recipe comes out of Attaboy or Milk and Honey, obviously amongst other uh, well-known bars as well, not just these guys, but they're reliable recipes. So you can uh, be rest assured that if you, if you make it with those specs, it's gonna be a great drink. And this is fantastic. The Fernet Brunca doesn't actually stand up as potent as I was anticipating. But I mean, it's still 100% it's still there. You get those menthol notes, um, that earthiness just like lingering. It's got a long finish. And again, I'm surprised the honey isn't more prominent. Having three quarters of an ounce of a three to one honey syrup is uh, it's usually gonna be pretty, pretty upfront. These are all great drinks and you should definitely try them. All right, it's tequila time. We're making the Crimes of Passion by Hunter Orwood. It was created in 2018, 2018, at Attaboy. So it's a split base, not an equal split base, but uh, between tequila and mezcal. Uh, I'm using uh, Tequila Carrera, their Blanco. So 1.5 ounces, 45 mil of Blanco tequila. Half an ounce, 15 mil of mezcal, Del Maguey Vita. Fresh lime juice, three quarters of an ounce, 22.5 mil three quarters of an ounce, 22.5 mil of passion fruit syrup, one quarter ounce, seven and a half mils of honey syrup. Add ice and give it a shake. Now I say it all the time, but I'm really looking forward to this combination. Tequila, passion fruit, honey, beautiful. Into a chilled coupe glass, double strain. And it's garnished with a little dusting of cayenne pepper. 
Then we have the Crimes of Passion. Absolutely love the name. Crimes of Passion, Passion Fruit, get it? It is a little bit sweet, this one, with a combination of um, Library & Co's Passion Fruit Syrup. I might be inclined to drop that, like just do a, um, a scamp, three quarter ounce, a tiny, tiny bit less, a little bit. Maybe not. It is a little bit sweeter, but it's not, not too sweet. Um, wicked flavor combination though, tequila passion fruit. Uh, you get a little bit of that vegetal smoky characteristic from the, the mezcal. It's not overpowering. It's only got half an ounce, half an ounce. It's only got half an ounce in there. <laughs> Just had to double check that. The spiciness, it comes through quite subtle, lingers a little bit after. So you've got like these bright flavors, the, the citrus, the honey, the passion fruit, and you got this uh, underlying agave and spice. Another great drink. It's gonna be hard to decide which one's my favorite. Time for another stir down. This is the Belshire Old Fashioned by Mitchell Taylor, created at Attaboy in 2018. 2018. <laughs> it is an old fashioned, but it's in the territory of a vocare. It doesn't have sweet vermouth. Um, if you're familiar with the uh, vocare, it's rye, cognac, sweet vermouth, benedictine. In different ratios, obviously, but this is more of an old fashioned spec, uh, meaning you've got a couple of ounces between the two spirits and then smaller um, portions of the sweet component. Uh, so it's gonna be spirit forward. Vocare is spirit forward, but a little bit more on the sweeter side. Anyways, let's get into the drink. Rye whiskey, Rittenhouse rye. It's literally the only rye I've been using on the channel lately. Uh, for good reason, it's a great rye. One ounce, 30 mil. Now again, this is a stir down in, uh, in Sam Ross's app. It does call for stirring in the glass on ice for five or six rotations. I'm gonna stir a little bit longer, let it dilute, let it chill a little bit further. And PF Rhymed, Crude Cognac. Um, it's probably about time I got another cognac on the, on the bar. One ounce, 30 mil of cognac. Now I think this combination of Benedictine and honey is gonna work really well. So you've got a uh, Benedictine being a herbal liqueur, but it's like a honeyed herbal liqueur. So it's gonna be more prominent or it's got a more of a, a honey accent to it once you add honey syrup. So I think this will work very, very nicely. Last spoon of Benedictine, add some uh, herbal complexity, some sweetness to it. A bar spoon of honey syrup. Then we have Payshord's bitters, uh, two dashes. So I'm gonna triple it because I'm using a little dasher. Uh, it's gonna add some like aromatic anise, sweet anise notes to it. And then we have one dash of absinthe. Oh, come on, that was, the first dash was pretty lackluster. Again, more anise, wormwood, herbal notes, maybe not herbal. Uh, wormwood and uh, absinthe. So I'll add ice and stir it down for roughly 20 seconds. Strain over a rock. I may regret the uh, extra half dash of absinthe because I can smell it from here. Lemon twist as a garnish. Lemon works particularly well with rye and cognac. Uh, Orange works well with bourbon. Obviously it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's good to use as a guide. Bosca slicer, link in the description, just so you can get a nice uh, nice thick peel with some pith on the back. It's got some structure. It's good for a rustic peel with lots of oils. This one's down my alley. This one's, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There's the uh, anise coming through. The, the anise took a while. It evolved. I, I think I would have preferred just that tiny little bit less anise. It's a little bit overpowering, only just, only slightly. You still get that honeyed herbal sweetness. Um, the combination of cognac and rye, like in a vo vocare, works exceptionally well. This is a beautiful drink. Out of the, the two stir downs that I've done, the, the Chet Baker and um, the Bell, Bellfire, Belshire, old fashioned. This is probably more my, my cup of tea. I'd prefer this one. 
Out of all the cocktails, oh, that's a hard one. As far as my favorite goes, probably one that I recommend to try. I, I recommend trying all of them, but uh, East New York Flip, 100%. That was delicious, it's rich, it's more of a dessert cocktail. I don't des drink a lot of dessert cocktails on the reg, but great drink. All five of them were great drinks. Now, if you enjoyed today's video and you love honey cocktails, I'll link to part one up here, which is more of the classic uh, honey cocktails, such as the Bee's Knees and the Gold Rush. And then I'll link to part three up here, which uh, won't be published yet, but if you've watched all the way to the end, you'll be able to click this link right there. Um, and that'll be more, not original cocktails, because they're not my originals, um, more unique cocktails that you probably haven't heard of, but I highly recommend trying. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon for another cocktail video. Cheers.